fire burning out of control this morning, destroying a mill. You still change your mind. Dorian, what are you doing here? Uh, well, the whole family's gonna be here right after church, and uh, sooner I tell my dad what happened down in Tidewater, the way Mom treated you like dirt, sooner he's gonna understand that people are just gonna have to accept you. Us. Your father is a fine man, but asking him to accept us. He will. Us. He will. I mean it, Dorian. Listen, I'm just gonna face him man to man. I'm gonna get him to see things from my point of view. But you're gonna have to let me handle it my own way. I am very proud of you. Have I told you that? Hey, Joey. <laughs> hey, Daniel, what are you doing here? I'm a very GQ you. man. Um, helps with the tuition. Oh. This way. I have a very nice table for you and your mother. How long have you been with the program, Ellen? Well, we celebrated a year last month. Well, what can I say, Max? It never gets any easier. The, the itch is still there. Isn't that true for you, too? No way. I am not gambling again, not on anything. My God, you're so sure. So strong. Well, Ellen, you can fight this. Look, Ellen. And I will help you. Huh? The group will help you. I know, but sometimes all the help in the world's not enough. Sure it is. You wait, Max. Someday you're going to understand exactly what I'm feeling right now. We write about the Reverend Carpenter and Miss Margaret Saybrook. Shouldn't we stop Cassie before there's a scene? Oh, let's not. Because if there is a scene, then we have our answer. Come on, Marty. Don't stay back here long. Come sit with me. Even sweeter. Hmm? You call it sweet? I say something smells. Vestibule, he had to talk to somebody. That pretty lady. What? That pretty lady he was talking to before you got here. Not everybody's strong, Max. Yeah, but that is what gamblers' outreach is for, so we can help each other. It's funny, you know. I I came to church today because I thought. I hope just being here would give me strength. And who do I run into but this guy, R.J. Gannon? I used to see him at the casino. And suddenly I start thinking, he's a loan shark. You need money, Ellen. There's your answer. Right in church. Ellen, I know R.J. Don't get involved with R.J. Look, he's got a lot of nerve showing his face in here. But look, he's gone. You forget about him. I will. I will. Will you please not worry about me? I'll be fine. I, I, I'm just going to go get something to eat. I know Rhodey's is right down the street. Will you go back to your family? 
Thanks, really, for everything. I'll see you at the meeting tomorrow, okay? Today. The meeting is today, Ellen. Whoops. I'll you see bet. You. Sure. I wanted to take this opportunity to, to thank our choir. Uh, we're very blessed to have such magnificent voices. I'll meet you tonight at Serenity Springs, okay? Wow, what's going on? I've got a friend who's in trouble. I'll see you in a while. Right? Years. Oh, I, look, I can't go into it now, right? Look, I'll meet you back at the house. We'll talk about it then. <laughs> I have been accused of a great many things in my life, but resembling Joe's mother, Victoria Buchanan, is not one of them. I'm sorry, I thought I'd... Uh, I'd... You thought wrong, Daniel. This is my... This is Dorian. Oh, I'm... I'm really sorry, Joe, man. I didn't mean it's to... It's all right. That's right. Why don't you just show us that nice table you mentioned? <laughs> you got it. This way. Thank you. You're welcome. And, uh, you know, listen, um... I just wanted How to say there's a bottle of mineral water. That's all right. Right away. Bravo, Giuseppe. What did I do? <laughs> it's what you didn't do, enamorata. <laughs> I mean, you could have blushed. You could have pretended you didn't even know me. I'm proud of you, Dorian. The feeling is mutual. Leave the rest of the world to their smug opinions and safe little lives. You and I... We'll love as we please, and never apologize. Never. I don't care what anyone thinks. Even your father? That's right. Joe, maybe I should talk to him first, you know? No, Dorian, look, you've gone far enough out of your way as it is. You practically begged Mom to, to, to apologize to her. Now, if that's not good enough for my family, then neither am I. Darling, I'd never want to force you to choose between them and me. Well, I hope I don't have to. But I will not let anyone insult you or misjudge you, Dorian. Even my father. You are very brave. You know that? You really are. Please rise. Send us now into the world in peace. Grant us the strength and the courage to love and to serve with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Go in peace. Anything from Vicky? No, not today. How about Nora? Well, she should uh, get in pretty soon. I just hope she gets in before I have to show up at that party at the country club. <laughs> Police commissioner, you got to show up at everything. <laughs> Andrew, he's a fine sir. Thank you very much. Hey, sir. Listen, if you'll excuse me, I just uh, wanted to... Yes, I mean, I'll tell you, Andrew, it was almost as moving as the word you said at our wedding. I'm happy to report that marriage is much better the eighth time around. Of course, when you do it right, like you and Cassie, once is enough. When you do it right. Uh, if you'll excuse me now. Oh, Reverend Carpenter, I just wanted to tell you that I'm looking so forward to coming by the rectory this week. I'd like to have a little chat with you. I'd like to be more involved in the church. And so if there's anything at all that I could do to help. As a matter of fact, I understand that there is a vacancy on the vestry board. I can't tell you how much it meant to me the way you offered me your hand. Just knowing that you didn't believe those lies of Blair. Right, Marty, just not here. Not out. Admit it, Elizabeth. Your suspicions were completely unfounded. Cassie is obviously still friends with Marty. It does look that way. Well, appearances can be deceiving. Did you ever hear of that? However, I'll keep my suspicions to myself until I talk to Cassie's cousin Blair. I think she knows more than she's willing to admit. Hi, 
Well, Blair, looks like your plans to ruin another marriage didn't work, did they? Must have spoiled your whole Sunday. yourself like this, do you, Andy? The only one who's going to embarrass himself is you. When you find out, you can't keep it up. Uh, fine. Let's do it. Here. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right here. Right now. On the bar. Uh, Unless, uh, you're just all talk and no action. Oh, honey, I talk the talk and I walk the walk. But it's only fair to warn you, I was undefeated at the police academy. No, oh, it's only fair to warn you that... Oh, hey, no fair. I wasn't ready, wasn't ready. Okay, okay. But you might as well give up, you know, uh, learn my technique in the Merchant Marine. <laughs> so where's she dead, too? Well, I'll tell you what, you win this one, and uh, I'll show it to you. Oh. <laughs> ready? Mm -hmm. Sorry, I didn't let you lose in your own turf. Oh, okay, so you let me win, is that it? Hey, next time I'll show you no mercy. When would that next time be? I'm available. The question is, are you? <laughs> Can I help you? Uh, no, 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 thanks. Accusing me, Luna. I haven't done anything to you. Oh, yes, you are. You're trying to hurt my friends. I don't know what you heard or what you think. You know, you it's just like a it. reflex with you, isn't it? You, you see two people who love one another and really care about one another, and you just got to get right in there and make them just as miserable as you are. But the trouble is, is that doesn't change anything. You are still the same sorry soul that you always were, and you always will be. Do you know where the list is of the volunteers for Caroline down at Glen Hollow? Yes, it's in your desk, top left drawer. It's a wonderful sermon, paying tribute to uh, Luna and Sheila Cassie. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I meant every word of that, Cass. Hey! <laughs> hey, Reverend, I just wanted to tell you if that sermon got any sweeter, I'd have to tell the goddess herself to come on down here and join up. <laughs> That sure was sweet, wasn't it, Cassie? Oh, that's the word. Well, you deserved every word of it, Luna. Oh, I don't know about that, but I sure am wondering if I can use it to endorse my Love Line show. Oh, <laughs> Is that permitted? Sure, sure. I will gladly endorse the Love Line if you'll endorse our Thursday adult classes. Oh, well, I think I, that's a good trade-off, huh? You know, Marty, I was, uh, uh, actually, I was coming over here to see if you'd help me out with some Christmas cookies that me and Al were gonna make for the party. Uh, we need some pans with the sprinkles. <laughs> what, do you want to help us out something? Sure, I'd love to. Okay, good. Uh, see y'all later. Okay, okay, see you. Thank you, Luna. I was starting to think the whole church was staring daggers at me. Oh, honey, let me tell you. I know you had courage before, but showing up here today, I really showed them. Well, if it hadn't been for you, I would have stayed at home. I didn't want to give Blair the, uh... Are we ever going to make those cookies? Oh, Lord, you are just like your daddy. You want them all and you want them now. <laughs> well, all right, come on, cowboy, let's do it. You too, Marty. Shuffle out. Blair. Hmm. I owe you an apology. I mean, for assuming that there was anything wrong between Cassie and Andrew, when it's obvious that those two are closer than ever. And on such good terms with their friend, Marty. It's heartwarming to see everyone getting along so well, isn't it, Blair? Well, if that's what you call it. Heartwarming. Excuse me, ladies, I can't allow you to monopolize my cousin. <sighs> Thank you. You would think Sonny they'd have something better to do than gossip. Blair, what do you think you're doing? Haven't you caused enough trouble for one day?
What's the real fun of cookie making? I don't believe what Kendall just told me. She said I'm your son. It's more than a storyline. It's a legacy. Being about half my size doesn't explain it. No way, it's all in the leverage. Oh, hey, Max. Church over? Uh, yeah. Uh, you going on duty? Yeah, pretty soon. Hey, do you know how late that party's going over at the club? Do you think maybe I'd have time to go home and change and get there? Yeah, yeah, why not? It's, it, it'll be going late. You're coming, aren't you, Don? Yeah. yeah. Uh, do I have to wrestle you to get in, though? Uh... I never wrestle in a dress. <laughs> not usually. <laughs> Um, uh, listen, Dylan, did you see a woman? She's, she's about five, six, somewhere around there. She's like uh, reddish brown hair wearing a trench coat. She came in here? Yeah, yeah, actually I did. She came in, uh, looked like she was looking for somebody. She didn't stay long. Um, I don't know. She's confused or nervous or something. I enjoyed telling you the truth about Andrew and Marty. Keep your voice down. Look, it would have been easy for me to keep it to myself, but I felt because I loved you that I had to do the right thing. I know you believe that. You don't. I don't know what I believe right now, Blair, but I'll tell you one thing. Andrew's relationship to this church is a very fragile thing. A minister has to be a broad suspicion. Oh, well, that is a little late. But I'm not behavior. asking you. I'm telling you. Andrew's father is dying. He has enough on his mind without defending himself against some vicious rumors circling around this church. Oh, this is just incredible. Your husband betrays you with another Stop woman. Stop right that. That's not true. Well, well come on, Andrew. Marty, tell me this. If you're not having an affair, you made a mistake. Oh, and you believe it? Yes. That. So that's the end of it. Do you understand? Fine. Just forgive me for trying to help you. Just forget I ever said anything, Cassie. Excuse me. Excuse me, Andrew. Well, uh, Andrew, that certainly was a moving tribute to your wife. Was there any special reason? Oh, I hope my husband doesn't need a special reason to be sweet to me, do you, darling? Oh, no, no, it was most unusual. Oh, Andrew and I never hesitate to compliment each other. You ought to try that sometime with your husband. <coughs> now, if you'll excuse us, we have to get River into his car seat and we'll take the trip to Tidewater to see Andrew's father. Sweetheart? Excuse us, ladies. Bye-bye, Andrew. <laughs> well, I hope you're satisfied. Those two couldn't be happier. Certainly seems that way. Well, things aren't always what they seem. And as members of the vestry, I think that we have an obligation to see if those two are truly so harmonious or just pretending to be. Here's your father now. Be brave. I'll make myself scarce. Buon fortuno. Joey, I thought you were still down in Tidewater. How's your mother? And how's Sloan doing? Uh, they're okay. Just uh, have a seat, Dad. <clears throat> Drinking pretty fancy water these days, aren't you? Myself, I prefer um, this plain old seltzer. <laughs> Look, Dad, I have something to tell you, and I don't think you're going to like it. I just um, hope you'll try to understand. Understand what? I'm back with Dorian. I love her, and, and she loves me. I just hope you can try to be happy for us. I know you warned me about her. I know that. I, maybe in the beginning, a part of her was using me to, to try to hurt Mom, but that was before she fell for me. Just as hard as I fell for her. I mean, she went all the way to Tidewater. She apologized to Mom for all the pain she caused. Dorian apologized to Vicky. Yeah. Well, I mean, she tried. She meant every word. M Mom wouldn't listen. No, she just started yelling about how it was some phony stunt. She treated Dorian really awful. 
did she really? So I came back here to Landview to be with Dorian. I couldn't stay there another minute. And I'm not staying at Landfair either. I'm getting my own place on campus. If Dorian's not welcome at Landfair, then neither am I. And that's the way it's going to be until Mom can let go of this hatred and forgive and forget. Dad. You can, you can say what you want. I can take it. Good. Glenn. You know how I feel about Dorian. Now, if you want to ignore my warnings and disregard your mother's wishes, that's your choice. By all means, live your own life, your own way, at your own expense. What? Dad, are you threatening to cut me off? It's not a threat. It's just a fact. As of this moment, you'll assume your own debts and pay your own bills. Like you say in Italian, arrivederci. This is your way of punishment. This isn't punishment, Joey. Well, what else would you call it? I tell you that I'm ready to, to leave home, to live life the way and I, I want to live it. I say do it. Do it. Do it like a man. A man pulls his own freight, and he takes responsibility for making his own choices. If you want to move out, then pay your own room and board. Now, why can't you just be honest? This is about Dorian. You and Mom are exactly the same. You are so bitter and full of resentment that you refuse to see that Dorian has changed. Dorian changes all the time. Lizards do it, too. It's their nature. Dad, listen to me. Dorian went all the way down to Tidewater. She opened up to Mom. She poured her heart out, and all she got for it was a slap in the face. I thought you were different. Well, you're always telling us not to be so quick to judge. This isn't a snap judgment. I've known Dorian. I've known her a long, long time. Well, I guess that's your trouble. You're trapped in the past. Me? I'm trapped? Well, she has really got to hear. I don't want to hear anything you have to say about Dorian. You want to cut me off, you do it. I don't need your help. Not yours, not Mom's, not anyone's. perfect gift. See, when Dad drops his ice cream cone on his tie, it splashes on the cover, and all he has to do is wipe it off. And voila, it's as good as new. <laughs> That's amazing, Al. It sure is, honey. Now, what's even more amazing is that we can get Max to wear a necktie. <laughs> I think it's wonderful. Why don't you take that in there with the other presents that are to be wrapped for the surprise, all right? And while you're in there, try those sugar cookies and let us know if they're ready. Can I bring you back a cookie, Marty? Well, thank you, sir. <laughs> He's so sweet. I think he's got a crush on you. I <laughs> hey, it's mutual. <laughs> oh, so I don't know who's more excited about Christmas, Al or me. Can't wait to see the lights, the tree, the music. Well, ha, ha, ha. What in the world is this? Marty Saybrook in a holiday mood? Yeah, I, I guess. Must uh, have something to do with um, Cassie. Would it have anything to do with her? Well, you were there. You saw the way that she came up to me in church and put out her hand. Yeah, I thought it was a very generous gesture. I think she's, uh, well, I don't think she believes the lies that Blair was telling her about Andrew and me. Well, it looked that way, didn't it? Well, now comes the hard part. Cassie and Andrew healing the wounds in their marriage. Well, they can do it. I mean, they have to. If this causes any kind of permanent damage, oh, I don't think it will. Their marriage may have been on shaky ground, but they've got a firm foundation. And dear goddess, I mean, if Max and I can overcome our problems. I've got total faith that the carpenters can. Speaking of Max, where was he slipping off to? What do you mean, slipping off? No, I didn't mean it like that. I... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, he's, uh, he's just a very busy man. He, um, he's probably doing some business, some important business, I'm sure. May, may, may.
Okay, listen, if you hear from Ellen, or if you see her or anything, you give me a call, okay? Or, or call somebody in the group. Yeah, I, I, I really think she's gonna gamble, man. So call me. Great, thanks. Okay, well you and Sheila can have your stuff for your lunch together. I'm gonna go ice skating. Come in here, use a phone. Yeah, right. Now I'm done. Oh, listen, uh, that woman I told you about, if you see her, call me at Turner Springs, okay? Do that? Sure. So I got a big date with your sister, so uh, let's see. Okay. Well, hey, Max. I saw you in church. You so left I'm before I had a here. chance. Excuse me. I'm done. Give me a cold beer, please. Oh, Blair, what are you doing here? Shouldn't you be out, uh, wrecking someone's home? River's up from his nap and he'll be ready. Cassie, wait, please. I just wanted to tell you how much it meant when you took him. Marty's hand and you sat her next to you. It really was one of the most loving, generous gestures. It was gestures. an extra seat. I just wanted to thank you. Andrew, we really should go. You know, the roads will ice up before you know it. You've seen one holiday sale, you've seen them all. Daniel, do me a favor, get me a Campari and soda heavy on the Campari. Hey, man, don't do this to me. I just got this job. They catch me serving a minor, Come I'm on. on. Daniel, I thought we were friends. Yeah, well, so did I. Is your stupid drink worth me losing my job? A minor. Hey, Joey. Ace and Alex roped you into this little shindig, too, huh? <laughs> you like uh, drowning your sorrows, a little soda pop? Actually, Uncle Bo, I don't much care for soda pop, if that's all right with you. Well, what side of the bed did you fall out of? Don't ask. Thank you. Clint, did Joe find you? I'm easy to find, Dorian. Did you talk? Joey did most of the talking. Whatever you may think of me, Clint, I hope you weren't too hard on your son. Let me ask you something. How would you feel if someone was doing something that was guaranteed to hurt Cassie. I hardly see the relevance. You'd do everything you could to protect her, wouldn't you? Yes, of course I would. But I am not doing anything to harm Joe. Clint, I love him. Oh, you've got it down pat, don't you? Right down to that little tear in your voice. I've heard your act, Dorian. This isn't an act. Dorian, you don't love Joey. This is Clint you're talking to. You don't love Joey. What you do love is the chance to use Joey to hurt his mother. You and Vicky could sing an aria. Oh, yes, he told me that you went down to Tidewater to beg her forgiveness. She played right into your hands, didn't she? She was cold and cruel. Ask your son. She doesn't have a cruel bone in her body. She led with her heart. And you got exactly the reaction you wanted. So Joey's yours, for now. Don't underestimate our relationship. What we have is special. What you have is temporary. And when it ends, 
and it will end. You'll move on, and Joey will be left hurt. I will never hurt Joe. Oh, don't ever say never. And don't be uh, making promises you can't keep. In fact, why don't you just move on now before the hurting cuts any deeper? I mean, if you care about them half as much as you say you do. Oh, I'm glad you can make it, son. We'll be handy at first. Start without me. I uh, I need a drink. Who the devil's eating him? I don't know. one go about being on the vestry board? Say what? At the church, how does one go about being selected for the vestry board? Hmm. Well, I... Thank you. I would say it's like everything else in life. Who you know and how much you're willing to pay them. You're forgetting how much I owe to Andrew Carpenter. He practically saved my son's life when Billy's self-esteem was at its lowest. He kept my family together almost single-handedly. In my opinion, we are lucky to have him as our minister. He's extremely passionate in his convictions. Yes, it's his passions that I'm worried about. Just how many scandals has he precipitated just in the time he's been at St. James? He can't be blamed for every unfounded rumor. He was rumored to be madly in love with Victoria's daughter, Megan, a married woman. Now, was that rumor unfounded? And since you brought up the unpleasantness regarding your son, I am delighted that Andrew was able to be of help to Billy and to you, Virginia, but in the process, he almost tore this parish in two. And, and he made dozens of enemies in the bargain. Sometimes it's good to make enemies if they're the right ones. Andrew has always stood by his beliefs. But what about his long history of trouble with Marty Saybrook? Just how does that fit in with his beliefs? It does make you wonder, Virginia. No, it makes you gossip, Norma. And that's all you have to go on, gossip. <sighs> maybe, and maybe when everything is telling you that somebody is having an affair, they probably are. But Norma's right, for a change. There was something about Cassie's gesture towards Marty Saybrook in church today. It was kind. Oh, it was calculated to deflect suspicion. Now, you may have been fooled, Virginia, but I say that there's something brewing in the rectory, and it isn't tea. <laughs> Why don't you pay the babysitter and bring her down to and I'll get his Stop it. Together. Please stop. Stop making excuses. Stop ignoring what happened last night, what happened at church, and what is not happening with us right now. Now, Andrew, your father is terribly ill. And Vicky needs our help to give him the best Christmas ever. That's what counts right now. Them, not us. I agree. I agree. We should be there with them. But our marriage is what is important to me right now. I know it's not the time. Tell me that we'll talk. Tell me that we'll talk. Really talk. If not... On the way to Tidewater, then once we get there. You know, I really don't know if I can. You reached out to Marty. You reached out to her. I took that as a sign of a new beginning. I can't believe you were just being polite. Cassie, can you forgive us? Andrew, church is a very public place. I had to show friendship to Marty. But with me, in private. my case, Dylan. What's the matter, Blair? Truth hurts. You want truth? Well, I'm not the only homewrecker in this town. You're on again, off again, girlfriend Marty Saybrook is? Hmm. Why don't we just leave Marty out of this one? Well, I thought that you wanted the truth. Oh. Poor Dylan. While you were off getting hot dogs a few weeks ago in the park, Andrew and Marty were practically crawling all over each other in the bushes. What? Don't you believe me? 
Or maybe you do. But then again, you know, then why don't you just go ask her yourself? And then if you feel the need to, like, really insult someone, she's overdue. Give you, Andrew. You can. Yes. I know you feel just as badly about things as Marty does. I believe you haven't technically betrayed me. But I can't pretend it doesn't break my heart to think of you wanting another woman. It was an attraction. Yes. It was an infatuation. But I want you. I desire you. I, I love you. I love you. I mean, I, I wish you take things back. I wish it didn't happen. I wish things I hadn't said or done. What? But you can't. And neither can I. I may forgive you, Andrew, but I'm not sure I can ever forget. Dorian and Joey kind of boggles the mind, doesn't it? I'm trying to conjure up an image. I feel like calling the Vice Squad. Yeah. I think it's hard for you to believe Try being his father. What's your father's manual say about this one? Well, it doesn't. But, boy, I can't just sit around twiddling my thumbs while Dorian tries to drive a wedge between Joey and his family. Yeah, well, I'm with you, but it's going to take all of us to fight Dorian on this one. What, you talk, you're talking about Vicky? Mm-hmm. I can't call up there and intrude on what little time she and Sloan have left together. I don't think you should call. I think you should go down there. Look, Clint, Dorian is like a lit stick of dynamite. If we don't defuse this situation right now, it's going to blow up in Joey's face. I know just what you need. Yeah, so do I, but they won't serve me here. I'm underage. Well, we'll go to my house. The champagne is better. We will toast your courage in standing up to your father. Yeah, I stood up, and he knocked me flat. Clint was just being Clint, darling. He's gonna come around. He cut me off, Dorian. I want my own room on campus. I pay for it. Same goes for my car, my food, my clothes. I think so I'm gonna come crying home like a little baby. Well, forget it. God, if I had any doubts about leaving Landfair, it's over now. You're the only one in this whole town that treats me like a man. You are a man, Joe. Every bit as much of a man as your father is. I'm just so sorry you're having to go through all this pain. But remember, this too shall pass. Yeah. Or it won't. Save the champagne, Dorian. I'll see you later. <laughs> St. James cannot afford another blemish on its good name. Now, it is up to us to be... Oh, Liz, don't let me stop you. Well, Alice, you would be bored to death. We were just discussing church matters. Mm -hmm. So I gathered. Since you all were so kind to be my bridesmaids at my wedding, the least I can do is repay the favor. Tell me about this blemish. Oh, Alex, there's nothing that you can do. No, Jenny. I can do more about almost anything than any of you. And if I can't, then my husband's money can. Our money can. So, just tell me how I can help. Well, pull up a chair. <laughs> Gladly. Well, the blemish concerns Reverend Carpenter. Now, please, Alexandra, don't breathe a word of this to anyone, but uh, we have reason to believe that he's having an affair. Is that all? Alex! Oh, you're not shocked. Norman, nothing shocks me. Now, if Reverend Carpenter is having an affair, if he's guilty as charged, there's only one thing to do. That is to demand his resignation. Demand his resignation for what? And why? What has Andrew done now?
charged with murder in the first degree. But this is a man who is on trial for his life. With no evidence for his defense. I think it's very possible that the grand jury may indict me. Will a twist of fate buy him his freedom? Does Graham may know something? Or will the truth lead a conviction? General Hospital, ABC Daytime.